Welcome back. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to complete our study of glutamate gamma semialdehyde. So we, we, in the last video, we talked about how arginine and proline got degraded to glutamate gamma semialdehyde. Now we're going to talk about what happens to that. And in the next video, we'll actually look at histidine catabolism. Okay, so glutamate gamma semialdehyde is going to react with one of the aldehyde dehydrogenases. And we have a whole video on aldehyde dehydrogenases. It might have been the one before this, the video before this. But suffice it to say, it's going to oxidize this aldehyde right here. It's going to oxidize this aldehyde up to a carboxylate. And if you were to oxidize it up to a carboxylate, what you get is glutamate. You get glutamate. And while, while we're here... We might also look at the glutamine catabolic pathway because maybe you haven't put two and two together. But remember that glutamine, when it gets catabolized, it gets catabolized to glutamate. All right. So not only are we converging uh, to glutamate with glutamate gamma semialdehyde, but we're also converging with glutamine. So now we have two molecules that get converted to glutamate, and those are glutamine and glutamate gamma semialdehyde. Okay? And what we'll find in another video is that histidine also gets converted to glutamate. Okay? And these reactions are not really all that new. We've seen them in all the previous videos. Well, what happens to glutamate? Well, that's going to react with glutamate dehydrogenase, right? And I might also mention this while we're here. There are actually three kinds of glutamate dehydrogenases. They don't, they're not called this, but we'll call one of them A, one of them B, and one of them C. So there's actually three types. One of them, at least in the direction that it's showing here, which is the only one it runs in under physiological conditions, right? One of them reacts with only NAD+, right? Another one of them reacts with only NADP+. And then the third one can react with either NAD or NADP+. Okay? So these are the three kinds of glutamate dehydrogenases. And keep in mind that this reaction of glutamate dehydrogenase only runs in the catabolic direction catabolic direction under normal conditions right because keep in mind that this is when you're doing amino acid catabolism you're either in one of two conditions either you're just eating a high protein diet or you're you're doing large amounts of amino acid catabolism whenever you um are have low blood sugar and you don't have enough glucose to run on glycolysis. So at that point, when you start to get low blood sugar, you'll start to run more on beta oxidation and amino acid oxidation, right? And so at that moment, when you're running on uh, amino acid oxidation, you're going to have low energy charge in the cell. And if you go back and watch the video on low energy charge versus high energy, ch energy charge, you'd notice that during low energy charge, you're going to have things like NAD plus and ADP and AMP, right? And then in high energy charge, which is not what you're going to have at this moment, high energy charge, you'd have things like ATP and GTP and NADH and things like that, things that are associated with high energy. And it turns out that glutamate dehydrogenase is going to be stimulated allosterically by your low energy molecules, and it's going to be allosterically inhibited by high energy. So for that reason, glutamate dehydrogenase really doesn't run in the reverse direction. And especially if you're loading the system up with glutamate by Le Chatelier's principle and allosteric principles, it's going to force the reaction towards this bottom molecule, which is, if I can get my mouse, this is alpha-ketoglutarate. So what we've seen in this video and the previous ones is we've seen arginine, proline, glutamine, glutamate, and in another video we'll see histidine. These five amino acids are degraded to alpha-ketoglutarate. 